Good evening and welcome to The Probe. Well, it remains a proposal for now, but it's generated a lot of discussions everywhere. It is because, is it actually because it is doable, but further details needed for implementation? Or because there are doubts about its visibility, considering the insufficient infrastructure? And the question many have also asked is whether the ailing Ghanaian economy is ready to run 24 hours. But are some sectors in this country not already running 24 hours? And is this proposal new? These and more are many questions. Also, among them is whether it's, we are on a sloganeering spree, which usually characterizes the season. What must change if we all agree it is the way to go? Tonight, we are probing the 24-hour economy put forward by the NDC and its flag bearer, John Dramani Mahama, during his Building Ghana tour, which he started. Um, he's been talking about introducing, quote, we will introduce a 24-hour economy with incentives and task breaks for manufacturers who will run extra shifts to create more room for employment. So this came up during the Building Ghana tour. Some further details have been provided along the line which we are going to interrogate tonight, including the operation of a three-shift system by industries and commercial entities on a daily basis. Businesses will be encouraged to sign up with tax incentives. There are some measures that will be put in place, including lowering electricity tariffs uh, for p after peak hours, and then also special meters will be employed to provide time of use tariff to deliver cheaper power to such businesses during hours of 10 and 6 a.m. We are told that 24-hour economy initiative will be voluntary. That's um, some of the details that have been provided. Of course, there have been some criticism of this particular, uh, you know, proposal that has been put forward. We're hearing from Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, who is also the flag bearer of the NPP, and amongst them, he says that the 24-hour economy cannot be legislated by the government and that there are many businesses already working for 24 hours and now the track record of John Ramani Mahama doesn't show innovative thinking amongst others and uh, the fact that the idea may not have been well thought through. These are some of the criticisms that have come up so far. You've heard some jokes also around on this, but these are more uh, matters we'll get into. So these are some of the issues that have been raised by the flag bearer of the NPP so far. Now we go on to the next slide and also uh, we put it side by side with the night economy and 24-hour economy. We've heard um, the finance minister, Ken Ophirata, talk about night economy, which is basically focused on improving sports and tourism at night and then also this particular shift system and uh, by industries and commercial entities on daily basis. So we put both side by side really will it be a 24-hour economy or is just a night economy you are the judge of that we are going to interrogate all these issues tonight here on the probe now going forward and this is put together by the joint news research desk we go forward the issues about the london's night economy for instance will be comparing to countries like uh, uk where london is also doing this the night economy we are told the contribution in gross value added 17.7 billion to um, 26.3 billion pounds in 2014 then the projected growth rate value is 1.63 billion yearly by 2026 that's the projection jobs created direct and indirect 1.26 million jobs and then projected growth rate in terms of jobs 66,000 additional jobs yearly that's the case for London's night economy. We are yet to get details of our 24-hour economy proposals and what the figures includes um, when it comes to this particular proposal that we want to implement in Ghana. Well, my guests will be helping us on when we are going to get these figures. The case of Sydney, uh, for instance, in Australia, Sydney's nighttime economy value in 2017, $27.2 billion. Jobs created 234,000 jobs. Uh, that's um, what we know when it comes to their nighttime economy as well. Uh, let's look at other cases that we know. Let's look at the United States. Um, we look at Japan, South Korea. Cities like New York and Las Vegas are renowned for their vibrant day and nightlife and continuous activities. Well, but in infrastructure, systems have been put in place there. What is our situation? Um, are we going to go at a snail pace? Are we going nationwide? Are we starting with a number of cities? These are key questions that most of you have been asking. The issue about Singapore, the United Kingdom. In the United Kingdom, for instance, London, particularly in central areas, sustains a thriving nightlife with select services operating continuously. The issue about transportation, pharmacies, healthcare, amongst others, contribute to increased job opportunities. Dubai, uh, which many people refer to, uh, the city of Dubai is internationally recognized for its 24-hour economy, characterized by activities and services available around the clock. 
would that be the way to go for us? Are we looking at nationwide? We are looking at cities. How many jobs are we hoping to create amongst others? You want to stay with me? My guest is the National Communications Officer of the NDC, Sami Jinfi. He joins me in studio. I also take inputs from industry persons and experts in the field, as, uh, as well as uh, await the final policy document that will outline the guiding principles and detailed implementation for this 24-hour economy proposal. I am MFA Apau, and this is The Probe. We're live on the Joy News channel on Joy 99.7 FM. We're on myjoyonline.com, DSTV channel 421, GoTV 125, and all our social media platforms. This is your show. You ought to participate with your questions, your contributions. Very much welcome. A quick turnaround, then we get talking. Please do stay with me. must work more efficiently. The restless quest for efficiency to solve our financial and unemployment problems is why I have emphasized that more than the traditional and regular methods of economic activity would be needed to revitalize this economy. My next administration, inshallah, will pursue projects and programs to transform Ghana into a fully-fledged 24-hour economy by optimizing available resources. I acknowledge the massive support for the idea of a 24-hour economy by the Trade Union Congress, civil society organizations, journalists, lecturers, labor consultants, CEOs, and captains of industry, personnel from the creative arts industry, drivers, traders, and the teeming unemployed youth of Ghana. God willing, from 7 January 2025, we shall implement a series of transition measures to address the economic decline and set Ghana on the path to recovery. The proposed 24-hour economy forms a part of NDC's vision to build the Ghana we want together. the man himself, John Dramani Mahama, this week at the CEO's cocktail, providing further details on this. He raises questions about the abandonment of the 40-year development plan, which was put together uh, under his regime, and uh, with taking up the Ghana Beyond Aid, amongst others. I have that document. We'll be taking a look at it and more right here on the probe. We are looking at the 24-hour economy and the National Communications Officer of the NDC, Samir Jinfi, is with me in the studios. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. On the probe. It's been a while. This whole year, I think we haven't, we haven't been on the probe, have we? I think so. Yeah. I think we've spoken on other places. Yes, of course, we have. Well, good to, good to have you in the studios Thanks once again. Me. Everything okay? I, we should relax and start. We have hope that mm -hmm. His Excellency John Dramani Mahama is coming to rescue us and to address the hydra-headed challenges confronting the people of this country with um, many policies and programs such as the 24-hour economy we are about mm. to discuss. So that alone gives us hope that there is light at the end of the tunnel mm. and that Ghana can be restored back on the path of true development and progress with the right leadership. I see that. a number of paraphernalia out there on 24-hour economy. Well, we'll be delving into some of these issues and more. But before then, uh, this week, or is it last week, um, you held a press conference, at least, a uh, moment of truth, and you were tackling the issue about the ally uh, that was supposed to be tabled in Parliament. Just after that, you were hoping to go on a protest and asking Ghanaians to do so. There was a withdrawal of that particular ally, that announcement that was uh, made by the information minister, and they add that they are a listening government. The reason why they've done that. <laughs> Well, um, it's good that the advocacy that was championed 
by the Minority Caucus led by the Honorable Dr. Atu Fawson, and the National Democratic Congress as a party has yielded results. I must say that we are not alone uh, in this struggle at all, but we had other key stakeholders like the Ghana Union of Traders Association, Guta, Fabak, the Ghana National Chamber of Commerce and Industry, and other stakeholders who yeah. spoke up against this, this regressive you know, law, which um, has the potential to collapse a lot of businesses in this mm. country. A bad law that has the tendency to breed corruption and chronism. Um, we held that press conference, like you said, a moment of truth press conference, thanks to multimedia, uh, despite media and other media organizations, it was broadcast live mm. to Ghanaians all across the globe and in fact to the world. And um, we're not surprised at all that government felt the heat and decided to beat a retreat. That is the right thing to do. They should not have introduced this ally in parliament in the first place. And um, it is our hope that they will completely abandon this idea, engage industry players more extensively and come up with proper you know, um, 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 solutions to the issues confronting us relative to the instability of the exchange rates. And okay. the for us well, for well, it turns out level. our agreement with the IMF would not even allow us um, to have such a yeah, law. That's a point we highlighted line. during mm -hmm. the press conference. Many uh, didn't know about that, but mm -hmm. we took the pains to research and put that information out. Initially, they wanted to deny, but eventually the IMF's attention was drawn to this because of mm. the sunlight we, we have shed on the matter. And um, the necessary directives have been given. But I'm not even looking at it from the standpoint of the IMF. I'm looking at the many businesses, mm. many companies who import the affected 24 products like rice, like sugar, yeah. like um, uh, clothing and apparels, vehicles, you know, and so on and so forth, who were going to be made to pay um, fees for licenses, license renewal, and their fate. Mm. Their destinies, the future of their businesses was going to be determined by an all powerful minister who had assess who, who was being clothed with excessive discretionary powers by this law okay. to determine who to issue a license and who not to issue a license, which license to revoke at any time. All he has to do is to give a reason, you know, and even to do what is called quantitative restriction of certain imports into the country. That was going to be a recipe for chaos. Okay. It was going to be a recipe for corruption, chronism, and state capture. And we are happy that our struggle has the other results. But we need to be vigilant because we know these people. So is it in its entirety or you would want them to engage further and bring it back? We want if, them to engage come further okay. and uh, come up with more um, 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 strategic and innovative ideas as to how we can support indigenous companies because there is the need for us to protect local companies. That is um, um, a view that we all share. Okay. The how is a problem. We were of the opinion that this particular law was not the right approach of achieving that, and the law was rather going to create a problem, a bigger problem of corruption based on the history of this country. And I think we adduce all the necessary facts to support our argument, such like that any discerning mind, any objective mind, who listened to that press conference, mm. um, 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 we are sure, uh, came to the conclusion that this law was bad for government. Okay. So we're happy. And it shows the power we have as a people. Many a times people look down on um, um, you know, press conferences and uh, various advocacy uh, and, issues advocacies and actions aimed at bringing pressure to bear on the government to stop a particular cause of action or to do something. But this is yet another evidence that if we come together as a people and we speak up against the rot in the system, the ails of government, we can get change even before the 7th of December. And don't talk. forget these words because they will definitely come back at some point. Absolutely. Indeed. Absolutely. Well, but let's talk about 24-hour um, economy. Speaking of businesses and the economy, uh, this was an idea that was mooted. At least we had uh, the former president during his building Ghana tour and it came up and subsequently some details are trickling in. The concern is we don't have 
all the full details when it comes to this particular proposal. But let's talk about 24-hour economy. From where you sit, what exactly is it going to entail? Okay, so when we say 24-hour economy, we are talking about a deliberate intervention by the next NDC Mahama government to create an enabling environment that will encourage and support certain public institutions, businesses and companies mm -hmm. to operate round the clock 24-7. Okay. That is what it's about. Mm -hmm. It is not going to be a chance event. We are not going to say that any business which thinks that operating 24-7 will be profitable, is free to do so, so you're on your own. Mm. This is going to be a deliberate intervention by the government to create the enabling environment that will make it possible mm. for a lot more companies, businesses, and public institutions to operate around the clock. And as President Mahama indicated in the tape you just played, this is not a mere political rhetoric. It's important mm. to make that point. Mm. Neither is it a mere slogan calculated for votes. Mm -hmm. It is a, a well thought through strategy which has its roots in the 40 year development plan mm -hmm. which was put together under the ex well NDC Mahama government and published in 2018, I believe. Mm -hmm. It was captured in our 2020 manifesto, specifically on page 105. Okay. So this is not something that we just how come came premium by. how come premium was not put on it at well, that time well maybe uh, maybe the the time for that idea has had not come mm. uh, um, a wise man once said that nothing can stop an idea whose time has come uh, i believe that the 24 hour economy is an idea whose time has come mm. uh, we spoke about it back then but it didn't gain uh, much traction as um, we are experiencing now. So I needed to make that point so that those watching us or listening to us will know that this is not just a mere rhetoric like mm -hmm. Ghana Beyond Aid and so on. This is a world taught through policy. If you check the 40 year development plan, it is there. If you check page 105 of our 2020 manifesto, it is there. And it's a product of extensive consultations and engagement with various stakeholders that this is the direction the country must go. Well, now, it's also important, mm -hmm. MFR, to make the point that the 24-hour economy is not an end in itself. It is a strategy to achieve an end. It is a strategy to achieve a certain objective. What is that objective? That objective is the overarching vision of the nation builder, His Excellency John Dramani Mahama, to transform Ghana from an import-dependent country into a self-sufficient and export-led economy. That is the overarching vision of this 24-hour economy. The 24-hour economy strategy will be the main driver okay. of this strategy. And so the rationale is simple. We are saying that for us to see true transformation that deliver prosperity for all, true economic transformation that delivers decent, well-paying jobs for the people of this country. Okay. We need to invest in the productive sectors of the economy with the aim of achieving self-sufficiency and achieving an export-led economy. And that is why President Mahama has said that to achieve this, we are going to prioritize um, um, ag agribusinesses and agro-processing. Mm -hmm. We're going to prioritize modernization and mechanization of agriculture. We're going to prioritize manufacturing and value addition. We're going to prioritize, you know, the provision of the necessary incentives for the private sector to thrive, for them to play their role okay. in this economy. But we are saying that after all is said and done, after we roll out all these policies, we will, not, we will still not be able to achieve our intended objective if we run the traditional eight-hour work system. Because eight hours is wholly inadequate or us to attain the, the needed level of efficiency and productivity and growth we need to create sustainable jobs and prosperity for the people of this country. God has given us 24 hours. Mm -hmm. Why do we have to waste 16 hours and only work 8 hours when all the advanced economies operate various degrees of 24-hour economies? Okay. So what we are saying is that under this overarching vision 
of transforming Ghana into a self-sufficient and export-led economy. All the interventions, policies we are going to roll out must lead to a situation where businesses, companies, and certain public services run 24-7. Okay, so the issue is about productivity. We'll, we'll get into the details because there are a lot of questions that um, need yes. answers. The issues about the infrastructure, the security, issues about safety, all those issues have come up. But first clarify for me, once you start rolling it out, will it be nationwide or you're starting with specific cities or capitals or regions before it starts, or it's nationwide? It's going to be a nationwide policy. Nationwide. It's going to be a nationwide policy, and that will be clearly contained in the comprehensive blueprint of the policy that we will be putting out, mm. as President Mahama has indicated. You see, there are specific... You know, I started off by telling you that this is going to be a specific... A nationwide. The concern is about the demands, oh, for instance, the other countries that we are copying are not going step. nationwide. Let's go step by step. Okay. Because first of all, we must understand what government intends to do mm -hmm. to make the 24-hour economy a reality. If you understand okay. that, then you, you, will, you would agree with me that there cannot be any geographical restriction to the... So what do you intend to do to achieve Number that one, nationwide 24-hour economy? is to create an atmosphere of security and safety. And President okay. Mahama has said that not only will we, you know, create this atmosphere of security and safety with our state security agencies, okay. but we're going to have a well-regulated and monitored private security architecture, which is going to ensure round-the-clock operations of businesses in a very safe environment. So security and safety is number one on the agenda. We're going to empower contained. the current existing state security that we have. That, that would be the starting point. Okay. But private security arrangements are also very key. And, and I, we can, I can expatiate on that, but mm -hmm. let me just outline for you the specific incentives, measures, that the next NDC Mahama government will put in place to make the 24-hour economy mm -hmm. possible. So security, and atmosphere safety. security and safety. Mm -hmm. The second one has to do with the provision of reliable and cheaper power. Okay. If you check the overhead cost of businesses and companies in this country, one of the key items affecting them, one of the key items that doesn't make them competitive, one of the key items that increases their cost of production is the high cost of electricity. Mm -hmm. You understand? And so President Mahama is saying that all participating companies in the 24-hour economy policy will be given smart meters, which will be calibrated to charge lesser tariffs during and peak hours during the night, mm -hmm. based on the time of use tariff system. A time of use tariff system is simply a tariff system that makes you pay for power based on the day of the week and the time of the day you're consuming that power. And so instead of allowing the power which is produced in the night to go idle for us to complain about excess capacity and capacity charges and so on, mm -hmm. let us have a deliberate policy that encourages businesses and companies to pray 24-7 in the night. And during these periods, let them, through a time of use tariff system, pay a relatively lower tariff so that at least we get something for the power which otherwise would have gone, would have lied idle. Mm. That's the second point. The, sec the third one has to do with what President Mahama has described as favorable tax policies, particularly significant tax incentives aimed at reducing the cost of operation of businesses and to ensure that they stay competitive. The tax burden, every government needs taxes to operate. We are not going to say that we will not introduce taxes. But the point is that most of the taxes that we have imposed on businesses and companies in this country are regressive and counterproductive. Mm -hmm. That has to be improved. And we need to create a congenial atmosphere with favorable tax policies that reduces the cost of production of businesses who, which will be participating in the 24-hour economy. You which you've said is voluntary. Uh, okay. and, then, and then finally, has to do with the provision of financing support. Very important. President Mahama has spoken about it. Financing support for certain strategic agro-processing and manufacturing companies. Mm. You, you take certain, you know, impulse that if addressed, if cut significantly, can significantly impact on our GDP and create jobs like rice. Look at the amount of money we spend on importing rice. 
you need to channel strategic financing in that sector to boost production. It is for that reason that the XWAL and DC Mahama government, for example, established the Ghana Exim Bank, the Ghana Export and Import Bank, to provide financing for exports. Today, that fund, which we established, has lost its bearing, it's been completely bastardized, they are deviated from their core objects. And the next NDC Mahama government will ensure that we bring them back on track and ensure that we channel funds like that, not just that, but other funds that okay. exist. So the like issues that, about the that. costs and the number of jobs we are hoping to create in that sector, because I've heard even Mr. Alabi today also mentioned up north that they are hoping to create jobs as a result of this 24 hour economy. Not just but jobs, well but I'm hoping paying, we'll get well the, paying, the fine details. Sustainable jobs. jobs you're saying. Exactly. Okay. So the fine details as to how much it's going to cost us as a nation to start implementing this and then also the number of jobs that we are hoping to create yeah. so at least I'll give you let me, four things of course on, four I things that we'll be doing but let me add the last one support. let me add the last one president Mahama has spoken about uh, improvement of infrastructure security and lighting in key entertainment districts such as Abekala Pass, the okay. Oxford Street in Osu, the Lagos Avenue in East Lagos and so on to create that you know, booming ninth economy experience okay. that allows businesses to thrive. Mm. When you come back to me, I will be telling you. I will you shortly. Specific I mean, let me sectors. let me go on to Zoom well, as well, and and, and then we'll take questions from our audience as well, which will will inform what else you tell us. But uh, we've been joined on the phone uh, by uh, is it by Zoom and um, the economist Professor Ibo Texin. I'm told uh, we've we've lost him. Uh, Setu Makwa is executive secretary of the Association of Ghana Industries (AGI). We also have uh, on Zoom uh, Mr. Edward Akanyamike, who is the Ghana. Hotel Association President. Thank you so much, gentlemen. We also have Mona Kote, who is a former Deputy uh, Finance yeah. Minister, also joining us via Zoom for quick inputs on this, and then it can inform how we go forward. Maybe I'll start with you, Mr. Chumakwabwa. Really, um, you are the manufacturers. You've heard some of the fine details that have been provided, at least security and safety issues about reliable power. Uh, and cheaper power uh, will be provided, favorable tax policies, provision of financing support, as well issues about infrastructure, he says, will be also dealt with. But really, from where you stand, we've been told that to an, to an extent, we are already operating a 24-hour economy. Really, what's your input when it comes to this whole issue about a 24-hour economy? Mr. Chumakwabwa. Well, thank you very much, and uh, good evening to your viewers. Uh, indeed, I'm happy... Uh, Samin has uh, mentioned quite a, co a couple of things that is being added to the 24-hour economy uh, discussion. Uh, all along, what we heard was more of the number of hours and the fact that you can run shifts and, and do the 24 hours. That's all we're hearing. But today I'm hearing some other elements that makes it more exciting. Um, for us, the idea of 24-hour economy uh, for us as businesses, anything that helps to uh, produce more, anything that helps to increase volumes of business, and we cherish it, we welcome it. And therefore, if somebody is coming out with a concept that says, I will enable you to produce more, uh, it definitely is an interesting concept to look at. Uh, but we have cautioned that when it comes to 24-hour production system, uh, for industry, it is already happening in a number of the businesses. But it is driven by order. It is driven by volume of business. If you don't have the volume of business to produce 24 hours, you wouldn't do so. If you have business, you have orders that you cannot satisfy within eight hours, you run shifts. And indeed, a lot of companies run shifts. Sometimes they do two shifts, sometimes they do three shifts. But depending on the state of the economy and the demand for their products, then they may decide to cut down. Sometimes they even go to the extent of even doing less than the eight hours, mm -hmm. let alone increasing 15 and and 24 hours. So it's all driven by demand. If it's driven by demand, then it means that in the condition that helps to increase your demand, uh, we welcome you to push yourself to the running shifts, different shifts to meet that order. So that is basically the principle when it comes to business. So when the idea came up, we, we said, okay, we will need better particulars, we need more information, we need a comprehensive uh, information about how this whole concept is going to run okay. before we can make you know, a significant pronouncement. But what Sami has also mentioned, which I think is important, is that they are not saying that it is an end in itself. Okay. It's a means to an end. It's a way to facilitate activities to achieve your objective. So as far as we see it in that context, then it's fine. And it means that other things must be at play for it to work well. And he's mentioned a couple of things, the tax incentives, 
uh, financing, provision of financial power. support, mm -hmm. infrastructure, and all that. Yeah. So if all these details comes, then we would we would see it as a, a good program. So it's not just the number of hours you are working, which is being emphasized, but all these other details. But as far as these other details are concerned, it's very difficult to make a judgment now. Because we've heard, you know, in different times, uh, different periods, different regimes, promises of, of financial support, promise of tax incentives, sometimes it becomes a different thing when you are faced with the reality. So, so many things happen in the economy, and therefore for us, it's very difficult to make a judgment, uh, pronounce, make a pronouncement on this. Perhaps if we get the details, if we say taxes, what kind of tax incentives are you talking about? How does it impact on manufacturing and industry? If you say financial support, what we need is medium to long term. Are we going to get it? Okay. Are we going to scratch the surface or are we going to get you know, a better financing arrangement? At what cost is the funds coming to us? Okay. All these details we need to know. And when we get it, then that's fine. Then it will mean that the 24 hour economy encompasses a lot more. And when you put it together, then that may sound very good to us. For okay. now, all we say is that we need further information, we need to engage further, and then, and then we'll see how it will benefit industry. Okay. Okay. Mr. Yeah. Chumakobwa, thank you very much uh, for your input. Um, at this point, we would have to uh, just let you go on this. And then we'll take uh, Mr. Edward Nyameke, also on the Hotelist Association. Also, he's the president. And all this, giving you um, some input um, into the show and also ask your questions as well. Mr. Nyameke, thank you so much also for joining us. If you can unmute, really, a uh, 24-hour economy. Uh, we are told that some hotels are already operating amongst others. But what would you need? Uh, to make it definite in terms of what you've heard so far. That's good news, isn't it? Right. MFA, thank you so much for the opportunity. You are very right. By the nature of the hotel business, uh, we work around the clock 24-7 because we need to uh, check in and check out guests uh, depending on their reservations and their bookings. So I would like to rather look at the possible impacts of the 24-hour economy uh, on the hotel business. Mm. First of all, I see that it's likely to increase patronage from the angle that if there is more employment, that means that more people will have money, they will have disposable income to be able to patronize hotel services. Okay. And then also the increase in business of the 24-hour economy also means that we are likely to have more international visitors uh, to do business in the country. And of course, when they come here, they are likely to patronize hotel services. We also want to look at it from the angle where the more people are employed, the more they pay taxes, the more they pay levies to government, and we are likely to see uh, an improvement in our infrastructure, including roads, which is very important to uh, the hotel business. Again, with increased patronage, it means that the hotels are likely to expand their business. They are likely to expand their facilities, which also means that they are also going to employ uh, more workers. Okay. So look at it from that angle, mm -hmm. it will mean that it, it, it's going to be a positive impact on the hotel industry. But as my brother said earlier on, uh, we will have to look at the incentives aspect, the taxes uh, that they say they provide incentives for the uh, industry. That's very, very important, and especially also with the affordable utilities, because as Sami himself mentioned, it is a major issue in our business. So. If the, the utilities regime in terms of the tariffs level does not change uh, to, to, to make a positive impact on the industry, then we will still be at the same place. So okay. on the surface, on the surface, frankly, a 24 hour economy will impact positively on the hotel industry and okay. we will take advantage of that. Okay. Dr. Dr. Akanyamike yeah. Jr., we're grateful uh, for your time here on the probe. So at least you've heard the AGI, you've also heard um, the hotels, Ghana Hotels Association, really. It's a laudable idea, yeah. but details in yeah. terms of what exactly um, the tax policies will entail will be, yeah. amongst others. Very insightful perspectives and we are most grateful to them for their contributions. We don't claim to be the repository of all knowledge, and so we take on board all these 
our perspectives in the, the finalization and implementation of the policy when we are giving the nod in 2024, December 7th. But let me deal with just four issues. Mm -hmm. The first one being the argument that we already have a 24-hour economy. That some is sectors. Yeah. Some sectors. Yeah. You see, we are not talking about the fact that the next NDC government, under the next NDC government, companies will operate 24-7. If we said that, then that will not be novel. That will not be new. If we said that under the next NDC Mahama government, companies will operate 24 7, that will not be new because some companies already operate 24 7. Mm -hmm. What we are talking about is that under the next NDC Mahama government, there will be a deliberate policy intervention to ensure that businesses operate 24 7. We are going to have a 24 hour economy strategy, simply put, as a country. That is novel, that is new because as we speak, Ghana does not have a 24-hour economy strategy like the United Kingdom has, like the United States has, like Sydney has, and so on and so forth. We don't okay. have one. Mm -hmm. We don't have any time-of-use tariff system that ensures that companies who on their own operate 24-7 get cheaper power. We don't have that. We don't have any tax incentives aimed at promoting round-the-clock operations. We don't have any finance, financing support for businesses that operate 24-7. And so to that extent, the 24-hour economy strategy we are talking about is new. Because we are not talking about a chance event. We are not talking about certain businesses based on demand, okay, or the nature of their business operating in the night or operating 24-7. Okay. This is going to be a deliberate strategy aimed at ensuring that you have three shifts of eight hours each. And it is backed by a strategy a legal framework which will include a new employment act first of its kind which will spell out all the regulatory framework the rise of employees the responsibilities of employers incentives under the, the program and so on this is a novelty and we must admit that now we are now getting we, some details uh, from yeah. this a particular in proposal the that details you have been when, really time, when, when are we hoping to get that whole policy document or implementation plan and if, such that we all know that this is where we are going. No, no political party introduces an implementation plan for a policy in opposition mm -hmm. because you can, you can only implement a policy after you have won power. Mm -hmm. I'm a policy student. You mentioned the name of one of my lecturers who unfortunately... Abu Texan. Yeah. Dr. Abu Texan. Mm -hmm. He will tell you that in impl policy implementation, stakeholder consultations are important. So the implementation So we are still plan, at the consultation stage? No, the implementation plan will be after 2024 elections. But as for the blueprints of the policy, the details of the policy, what it entails, the incentive, what we have in mind, the concept of the policy, mm -hmm. that will be out as part of our 24 uh, our 2024 manifesto. Okay. That will be. Do you out. have an idea how much it's going to cost us? Do we have an idea? All because you've heard him. That, that will we'll have to Let's wait for the, the details. So, so the first thing mm -hmm. is that you can say that a few companies already operate 24/7, mm -hmm. and that is not what we are talking about. Okay. What we are talking about is a 24-hour economy, economy strategy, which is non-existent in Ghana. What we are talking about is a novelty. What we are talking about is going to be a deliberate intervention to create that booming 24-hour economy and have a lot of businesses, companies, and public services running 24-7. Number two is the question of, oh, you can't legislate it, mm -hmm. so what is it? It won't work. That, that, that is an untenable argument, to be very charitable, mm -hmm. because the 24-hour economy idea we are talking about is going to be a strategy. Are you government the strategies is also going to be val now, voluntary as well. Isn't yes, it? and government mm -hmm. strategies are not legislated as a matter of compulsion. Mm -hmm. Government's responsibility is to use policies, programs, strategies to create an enabling environment for the necessary public, you know, services to be delivered efficiently. Okay, for citizens to get better services and also for the private sector to thrive. Okay. Once you do that, why then Padipa? Businesses will automatically take advantage of the tax incentives, of the cheaper power, of the financing support, of the security arrangements we are going to put in the place. Infrastructure, so you that is it. Those who say that we are not legislating it, I wonder what economic strategy in Ghana has in and of itself been legislated as a matter of compulsion. They failed one D1F policy 
was not legislated. The failed planting for food and jobs scam was not legislated. The failed one village, one dam initiative was not legislated. These are these were supposed, at least by what we're told. Planting for to food and jobs it will be argued that it is not failed, it's still being implemented. Kennedy Japan tells you that it's failed, and the evidence shows that it has failed. You Given the fact what Kennedy that Japan said, as against what pertains on the ground. What pertains say. on the ground is what? Food inflation hovering around 47%. Mm. The highest, one of the highest in the world. In fact, it's part of the, the Ghana, Ghana today is one of the top 10 countries with the highest food inflation in the world. If it is working, why do we have food inflation at that level? Why is it that our imports are going up? Okay. So that, that, that is a part about the legislation. The third point that I want to make, which is the point about demand, a very important issue, mm -hmm. like the CEO of um, um, AGI yeah. said, that without the demand, you cannot say that businesses should operate around the clock. Mm -hmm. But this is my answer to that, that I think they should think about. You see, we are in a country that consumes a lot. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, 90% or more of the things we consume in this country are, are imported. Mm -hmm. Day in, day out, importers bring in these commodities, including food, the things we wear, pharmaceuticals, and people buy, and they always go. Because they know that when we bring it, there is a market for it, there is demand for it. So the things we are talking about, when we talk about modernization of agriculture, agro-processing, manufacturing, so giving incentives uh, for all these industries to thrive, the demand already exists in Ghana largely. What you need to do is to create an enabling environment that enables our businesses to be competitive and allows them to produce at a comparative cost. Because the problem is that because of the high cost of doing business in Ghana, they are not able to be competitive, they are not able to compete with cheaper and in some cases subsidized imports. Once there is cheaper power, once there are significant tax incentives, financing support, and so on. They will be able to produce at a comparative cost, and the already existing demand in the country will absorb it. Again, we so are all this. It looks like all this will be private sector led. Is that not the, just the, private, mainly not private, private sector led? But I'm talking about sector. the sectors. Let, let me let me bring it. Let no, me bring no, in no, the let me questions. Let so, I mean, let me bring no, in no, questions. No, no, I beg you. Just, just, just the questions seconds. will help you no, just answer seconds. all those if questions. If I can just conclude mm -hmm. on this point. Mm -hmm. So the existing demand is there. Mm -hmm. President Mahama has also spoken about how we can induce demand further in this country by using the procurement power of government. Because as you know, government is the biggest spender in the economy. Once we roll out a policy that promotes a buy Ghana agenda and ensure that all ministries, departments, agencies are buying made in Ghana, whatever you're producing, there will be a market for that. Beyond that, there is after the African Continental Free Trade Agreement that we need to take advantage of. We are a member of the WTO um, um, trade facilitation you know, arrangement and so on. Even the ECOWAS, trade liberalization arrangement, we are a member. And we can, take, we can take advantage not only of the domestic markets related to import substitution, no, but even of well. these international mm -hmm. markets as well. Which, and finally, in, in just five seconds, the sectors. You know, somebody will say, what sectors do we have in mind? President Mahama has said that there will not be any limits to the implementation of the 24-hour economy strategy based on sectors. But some primary sectors have been outlined, and I'll quickly go through them. Twenty-four. You don't hour. know the questions coming. It would it would tackle okay. all these okay. issues. Wait. Just right. wait on that, sure. and let's take at least the first batch of questions. I'm told also we have the former uh, deputy finance uh, minister oh, Bonaparte yeah, sure. also on yeah. Zoom uh, with a quick input on this. Maybe I'll, I'll speak to her briefly. Then we can go into the questions yes. that we have. Then okay. Sami can go on uh, with that. Oh, as you want us to start with questions? Let me bring in uh, Madame Monacotti first, um, Yao. Yeah. So um, thank you so much uh, for joining us. We've been looking at uh, the NDPC document uh, from which we are told that um, the, the, this 24-hour this economy was birthed. You've been a, in government. You've already heard the criticism about the fact that it appears this is just a sloganeering and how come it, didn't, it wasn't priority for your party going into the 2020 elections, amongst others. Briefly, your input when it comes to this particular 24 our economy. Thank you, MFA, and hello to all your listeners and to Sami and Edward and Seth. Basically, um, in terms of it being in the 2020 manifesto that we had, it was there squarely under job creation. As Sami said, it may not have reached the audience, but it was squarely there for purposes of job creation. So we had it there. In terms of the NDPC 40-year document, that gives us the vision of Ghana wanting to be a high-income um, country by probably 2057. 
And in order to get there, you must have a roadmap, you must have a plan. I believe that this uh, proposed policy intervention, the 24-hour economy described by Sami and put out by President John Mahama's group and team, is one of the important ways of achieving this. There is no doubt that this concept is going to be a game changer to rescue Ghana from the current economic doldrums. MFI, you know the issues at hand. We are recovering from the uh, COVID pandemic. We are recovering from poor leadership. And therefore, we do need a roadmap that will take us to where we've always said we wanted to be, the bright medium-term future. Now, this concept is definitely in keeping up with global economic progress and also strengthening our global supply link chain. So Ghana is a valuable economic partner, and that role must be enhanced because, as you know, we provide very valuable raw materials into the global market. Again, we cannot even view this concept only as demand-driven, even though it may be primarily so, but also as supply-driven, as Sami mentioned, for competitive advantage and so forth. But it also brings efficiency and better pricing. We do have the natural resources, especially the agricultural produce, which will benefit from value addition to reduce post-harvest loss and also increase shelf life, which has become very important. This helps us to smoothen out supplies throughout the seasons, MFR, so we don't have prices gyrating all over the place. So it allows for better access of inputs to the industry and outputs for individuals and markets, lower prices, reduced costs, better overall cost and quality of life for all of us Ghanaians. Okay. There's no doubt that it will increase our GDP as a nation, but more importantly, it will allow us, together with the other key drivers that are needed and detailed in the NDPC 40-year strategy, to create a strategy that will allow us not only to grow on our own as a nation, but to collaborate under the ECOWAS protocols with the West African region to use infrastructure like ports, refineries, pipelines, and so forth to grow. A okay. key driver here is going to be capital. How do we create the capital that we require to drive the strategy? We know we have restricted access to capital markets right now because of the mess that we are in. However, we need to think critically about that as a nation and as an incoming government. And I believe we are the incoming government. We need to think about capital formation to support infrastructure, both logistics, technology, and physical infrastructure. So okay. that is going to become very important. And even markets in wholesaling and retailing, some of these important things. And President Mahama already spoke about uh, the market modernization program. So yes, we will have the day economy, but this other economy, which has three shifts, will improve the day economy. It will allow us to have lower tariff rates during the evenings and nights. Okay. It will lead to Madam a higher Kote, we'll, we'll have to leave it here. I'm, I'm so sorry, but we'll have to leave it here. And no, I know that we'll fine. engage. I know we'll engage further on this. Let me not leave out the audience at this point. Let's just bring in a few questions. Then we can talk about the sectors and then wrap up on this. And we'll engage further on 24-hour economy. It's not going away anytime soon. Yeah, if you're ready with the questions, I see a question, how can the NDC convince Ghanaians this 24-hour economy is not one of the souvenirs Ghanaian politicians are known for? And uh, Sami has been speaking to this. We've heard Mona Kote also. Sule says, has the NDC done any survey or discussed with the businesses why they are not operating 247 and what it would take to operate in the 24-hour economy? Um, quickly, Sultan says, are there specific sectors the NDC will prioritize for the 24-hour economy? And that's where Sami wants to come in. Quickly. And Kweku says the NDC have done well with the marketing of the policy, but they haven't discussed how much it will cost the state to provide tax incentives and lower tariffs for the businesses. For an economy that is always recording huge budget deficits and collecting very little in taxes, how will the state pay for the cost of this program? At least um, these questions um, capture everything and it takes us at least into the sectors. Let's start with that. Well, um, like I indicated, mm -hmm. there will not be any limit. Um, to the implementation of the 24-hour economy strategy based on sectors. But certain key sectors will be prioritized, and that has already been put out by President Mahama. These are 24-hour agro-processing, 24-hour pharmaceutical industry, 24-hour mm -hmm. manufacturing industry, 24-hour construction industry, 24-hour extractive industry. Here we are talking about mining and quarrying, 
24 hour sanitation and waste management industry, 24 hour leisure and hospitality industry, 24 hour digital startups and business process outsourcing to ensure automation and seamless operations, as President Mahama said, 24 hour financial services, 24 hour retail centers, 24 hour transportation services, and 24 hour public institutions such as our ports and harbors. Mm -hmm. The tax rider doesn't operate 24 7. NPS does to a limited extent with many challenges because customs still doesn't operate 24 7 and the financial institutions don't operate 24 7. Once you get customs and the financial services at the ports operating 24 7, yeah, the ports come around 24 7 and you can mm -hmm. create a lot of sustainable jobs through that. Then you can have the passport office operating 24-7. You know what that would do? Assistance now is not operating 24-7. Passport service, no. At least um, with applying online. No, we created an online service. application system in 2014 under the leadership of... But assistance now, at least. You, you can, can only still apply, apply online. You can clock online. Online, But application yeah. for a passport is just one component of the process of getting a passport. Okay, so beyond You need to go there to take a picture. You need mm. to go there to get your passport printed for you. Today, if you apply for a passport in Kumase, the, you, do you know the date you get for an appointment? April 2024. If you apply for a passport in Accra, you are likely to get April and then Kumasi May. Mm -hmm. So the process is still very tedious and slow. Okay. And that is why you need these institutions to operate 24-7. Okay. If the passport service is operated 24-7, you can imagine the impact on small Do we have transport sector? Do we have the yes, transport sector that. in there? Because the okay. man... But assistance now, the issue about infrastructure when it comes to transport sector, what we've seen in the... Why do the, you even have to worry about infrastructure when you're talking about a policy being introduced by the king of infrastructure? Okay. The most revolutionary transformation of the infrastructure of this country happened under the tenure of His Excellency John Dramani Mahama. Whether it is Ghana gas, whether the hospitals, the, the roads, because the network, concern is about that. the public but transport sure not operating amongst others. Really, mm -hmm. we have considered that, okay. and that has been captured in the policy. And when we put out the blueprint, you see all that. Mm. But I was telling you that you see, if you have passport offices and all these key state institutions operating twenty four seven. The man who runs a photocopy business at the passport service will not be closing at six again. He will be running around the clock 24 7. Mm. The one who sells banku during the day there will be selling kelewele and indiomi in the evening mm. into the night. You see, so that is how the 24 hour economy strategy will impact even the SME mm. sector. And we've said that we are going to implement this policy within the context of our national development initiatives, such as education and training, health services, agriculture, and what have you. Mm -hmm. Now, there are some who also say that